Hey guys, welcome to a new episode of the Cactus Corner. Um, no Steve today. He's back in uh, where are you going? Bahamas. 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 <laughs> back in the Bahamas. <laughs> uh, so we've got the awesome foursome here today, and you guys are back in your regular spots. Yeah. Good to be back in our regular spot. Everything's back to normal now. Lincoln's not happy, but not I'm happy. happy. No, I don't mind this spot. <laughs> I think it's pretty cool. Pretty comfortable. <laughs> Uh, so we're going to answer your questions sent to our Instagram page at Swap Club AU. You guys probably know the drill by now. So if you have a question, then shoot us a message to our Instagram page. All right, let's get back into the first question. If I train three days per week, would it be better to set my training split as a lower and upper and lower, or legs, back and arms, and then chest and shoulders? Magic pro. What would you guys do if you had to prescribe someone for three days? Well, I guess it depends what the goal is. Mm. A lot. Yeah. Because, like, generally for fat loss, I would probably, um, I wouldn't do a split, really. Mm. I would do compound exercises as much as possible. Um, but, yeah, it depends on the, what the goal is. Mm. What would you do for hypertrophy? For general population, um, I would aim for full body workouts as opposed to doing splits. Um, even, I guess, for hypertrophy, it'd be quite difficult to try and do everything in three days because it comes down to volume and, and amount of sets per body part per week. So trying to get you know, in the upwards of 15 to 20 sets of, of working sets per body part in three days is pretty difficult. But um, I would, I mean, for, I guess for general population, for general training, then I would suggest <coughs> doing full body workouts as opposed to, you know, doing like muscle groups just once per week and trying to go for the entire uh, body and then trying to hit that three times per week and, and trying to increase the frequency. I'd, yeah, full body as well. Yeah. Yeah, for general population, unless you're just really training for something specific, mm. but I do full body. Start with, as like I said, the compounds, and then maybe add in like some accessories. If they need to, if there's something specific, like yeah. um, uh, glute work or um, like rotator cuff, um, mm. but you do that as a warm up. Yep. So, yeah. And then for adding a little bit of conditioning at the end, which should be full body compound like movements anyway, mm. you're going to get the heart rate up. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I think if you cut into splits, then you know, if you miss a day, you're not going to get yeah, the most out of it. So. Yeah. 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 Stick to your yeah. So pretty much aim for full body workouts. Uh, okay. Uh, I've started doing intermittent fasting, where I eat now from midday to 8 p.m. Is it okay for me to have a coffee in the morning, or will this ruin its effect? Going to intermittent fasting, Queen? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> um, black coffee. Nothing with calories. So yeah, nothing that's going to break your fast. Because the whole idea of a fast is if you want the health benefits of it, to have that time without food and that without calories. So um, if you're going to have a coffee, then just a black coffee that's got no calories in it, if you need it. But other than that, water, maybe green tea, but no milk in your coffee, no, if you're doing like ketosis or whatever. That's the reason you're doing it, yeah. Yeah, no, like um, butter or whatever they put in it, so yeah, no. I guess if it's the reason you're just doing it just to lose weight, then probably wouldn't be detrimental. You just like just trying to like lower your calories overall. Yeah. But yeah, I think I'd be spot on. That's yeah. always. <laughs> <laughs> I think the thing too is sometimes if you're having though, be careful having caffeine on an empty stomach too. Because mm. if you have, it can, because it's so acidic, it's not great for your digestion. So you want to have something in your stomach before you have caffeine. Not for everyone, but if you do have stomach issues or yeah, you're already acidic, mm. then I wouldn't, be having just coffee anyway, mm. so yeah, depends on what you are looking for. Yeah, oh, bang, direct, like it. Is it recommended to stretch before and after each training session, or should I spend one day focusing on stretching? Ability King? Well, I, I wouldn't do, if you're talking about static stretching, not before a workout, um, especially if you're doing weight training, because most Study fine actually reduces power output anyway. Um, so probably not before, if you're looking for something to do before, more of like a, you can do like a lot of movement stuff and whatever you're actually doing in the session, relate the warm up to that, it's gonna improve what's in the session. 
Um, static stretching is probably fine after. Um, the reason I'd probably do it after is if you get sore, it um, reduces DOM, so muscle soreness the next day. Um, and in terms of doing, did you say like one day? Oh, you probably, I'd probably like make it a routine of just doing it after you work out, really. Like, there's good benefits of it. Um, keep you moving well. And you're reduce, warm. Yeah, when you, yeah, you're already warm as well. You don't want to be static stretching you know, when you're cold. Yeah. Um, this is a good habit to get into. And But even like all these like physical benefits, even mental, makes you feel good. Like, you can just get your breathing back. You can just like everything like that. Um, I think it's best perform static after. Um, good for recovery. Yeah, and helps for recovery as well. Yeah, like the muscle soreness. Um, and yeah, keep your performance like before warm up, some mobility stuff, more dynamic exercises. Yeah. That's what I'd recommend anyway. Mm. Um, yeah, and you can do it daily. Like even if like you just want to stretch when you're not training one day, it's okay just to have a stretch. Just like just to stretch, yeah. that's fine. It's not gonna um, do any harm. Um, just make sure. I think it's your back. Yeah. 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 You don't want to stretch your back first thing in the morning. You do yeah. cold. Yeah. You have a warm shower first, yeah. and then. Yeah. Do you stretches, back. Mm -hmm. And obviously, if you're just always stretching, you're really mobile, just make sure you've got a bit of stability as well. As you see very often, like, I know people from like maybe yoga backgrounds or dancing or anything where there's, they're very hyper mobile. Um, when you get put under load, you have no stability to counteract that. That's when you get a little bit of issues. So, so stretching is obviously great, but that's something you'd be wary of as well. Have that stability component. Yeah. Nice, Luke. Okay. Thanks. Uh, so much. <laughs> I'm gluten intolerant and <laughs> gluten intolerant. Gluten intolerant. <laughs> I knew I'd stuff that up. Gluten what? <laughs> I'm gluten intolerant. <laughs> Since cutting out gluten, my energy levels have been low and I'm putting on weight. What do you suggest I eat if I cut out gluten? I mean in this case we obviously don't know what exactly person cut out but I would say um, that you need to keep eating vegetables fruit where you get the energy from because gluten is mainly in processed food um, so yeah cut the processed food out but you can still have your fruit and veggies to get energy back a lot of protein there is no protein in, uh, in meat um, get energy from nuts maybe not too many if you're putting on weight but yeah yeah. yeah, well it's mainly processed carbs, so if you've cut out gluten mm -hmm. and you haven't replaced those carbs then your energy is going to be low. So um, yeah. getting your carbs from vegetable sources like sweet potato, potato, pumpkin, you know, your fruit, food, like quinoa or um, brown rice as well, it's going to bump up your fiber, yeah. which is going to be better, it's going to sustain your energy. Um, so yeah. yeah. If you're doing that, just pulling carbs, so your energy is very low from that. Mm. Plus, if it's a change in diet too, I mean, the first you know, couple of days of the week, you'll probably notice that change anyway because you have made those changes, so it could just be adjusting to that. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Nice. nice. Uh, that's all the questions. Short and sweet today. Short and sweet. Nailed it. <laughs> Nailed it. Good job. Um, that's it. So if you have questions for us for the next episode, make sure you shoot them to our Instagram page, Squat Club. Are you? Wait, before we go, Ash has a dance. <laughs> we said we were going to do this. I wasn't ready. I missed that memo. Sorry. Come on, Ash. Let's go. I actually did. Let's go, Ash. Was that, was that noise coming in? I can hear the yeah, song. Yeah, I can hear the song as well. How does it go? Ash, I'm, not ready. Ready. I'm not ready. Go, go. Can we get it out? Oh, Ash. Just a little bit. <laughs> Come on, Ash. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. 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 I'm sor